functions in Kotlin are really no different than functions you'd find in other object-oriented programming languages. They're declared in Kotlin with the keyword fun, which is why I like to say Kotlin functions are fun. It's an easy way to remember that keyword. In front of fun, we can have a visibility modifier. In most cases, we don't specify a modifier because the default is public. So the three modifiers, public, private, protected, and internal, a public function means that it is accessible anywhere from inside that project, from any other class or from within any module. A private function, though, is accessible only from inside the class in which it is declared. This is encapsulation. Likewise, a protected modifier is accessible not only from inside the class where it's declared, but any subclasses derived from it. This would be involving inheritance. And then internal functions are accessible from inside the same module. And in Kotlin, a module is simply a group of files that are compiled together. I like to think of different types of functions within a language. So we have event handlers, or what I call event handlers. And that term really comes from other languages. But here we're handling some event. We've used the onClick event with our buttons and some of our projects thus far, where we wrote a function name. And that function name basically has the same naming requirements as variables do or values do. Should start with a lowercase letter, although it doesn't have to. It can start with an uppercase. The tradition is lowercase letter and then use camel casing or underscores in that name. Now for an event handler, we're going to have a parameter of the view that triggered this function. What was the button or the text box or even the image view that the user tapped to execute this function? And so there it's android.view.view. So here we have v and its data type is android.view.view. And the v of course is just a variable that, that I chose. That's pretty common, but you could call it my view or some other name that you prefer. In an event handler, we're not returning a value. So there's no return type and there's no return statement with a return value, but instead there's a function body where we do something. So here's an example. Notice I can import the android.view.view with an uppercase V on that second view. And then in my parameters, I can just refer to V as a view with an uppercase. That's the view class. It's an instance of the view class. So the name of my function here is btn test clicked, and then I have to do something such as set the background color of my constraint layout. So that'd be our function body. And that function body, of course, could be one line. It could be hundreds of lines. Now I can reference the parameter of the view that was clicked, or the target view. In this case, let's say we have three buttons. Each button has a caption of SMCC, ASU, NEU, and it's going to display the text of South Mountain Community College, Arizona State University, or NEU, and we click any of those three buttons. These three buttons can share the same piece of code, the same event handler, and I can differentiate doing different things based on the value of the, the button that was clicked, based on the view. So in other languages, such as C-sharp, we can't access the attributes of the parameter view directly, or parameter control, so we simply set up a variable as the type of view equaling v as whatever the data type is, in this case, button. Now there's a couple other ways I can do that. So this is kind of the shortcut way, but val btn target colon button equals find view by id, generic type being button, and passing it v dot id. Or I could remove the generic type off and, and simply declare it as button. Those are basically the same thing. I think the shortcut's a little bit simpler, a little more readable. Then I can take a property or an attribute of that BTN target, such as the text property, convert it to a string, and place it in a variable called caption, and then use that in a when structure to display different text based on the caption or the text of the button. Now the cool thing in Kotlin, I can actually reference the variable directly. So in this case, I can simply say when v.getText to string dot uppercase and pass it that way. Now the only drawback here you need to be aware of is we're treating this as a button that has a text property. What if we tie this event procedure to an image view that doesn't have text? We're going to get an error. So in that regards, I think that these options specifying that btn target is a button 
may be a little bit safer. And of course, you might want to do all this in a try catch if you're really concerned about that. But since we're setting this up as, as designers, we should be aware of what views can trigger this function. So it really shouldn't be an issue. We can have void functions that simply do something. And there we can have parameters. And the parameters, by the way, are comma separated. So you have multiple parameters there. And so I can create a function called just do it. I don't have to have parameters. And maybe when I declare just do it, we are setting again the background color of the constraint. In this case, the FFFF00 is yellow. And I would call that from a, another function simply as just do it and passing it the parentheses. Remember, methods and functions always have parentheses. That's how we can tell that it's a method or a function. And that's really true in every language. But I can also have return functions, a function that does something and returns a value. So in this case, I have my parameter list and then a colon and a return type before we have the curly brackets that specify the body of the function. And then if we have a return type, we must have a return statement on every concluding fork of the function body. So if your function body has an if else, you're going to need a return in the if and return in the else fork assuming that is the ending value of the function. So here's an example. Calc cost is my function name. My parameter list is a colon, which is a type int, b, which is a type int, c, which is a type int, and then my return type is double. So in the body of that text, I'm gonna pass it three integers. I'm gonna have another value called d, which is gonna be a type double. It's gonna be a times the price a, plus b times the price of b, plus c times the price of c, and in that case, Price A, price B, and price C are all class level variables. I'm not passing those, I'm pulling those basically from RAM. And I can declare this then, maybe in a statement that says total cost equals calc cost, and pass it A, B, and C. So the 20 would be A, 17 would be B, and C would be 36. Now I can also give default values to those parameters. So here, I specified A has a default of 5, B has a default of 10, and C has a default of 20. And to show an example, rather than using price A, price B, and price C, I hard-coded $2, $3, and $4. So it's basically doing the same thing, but I want to show how you can call this different ways. So if I say calc cost and then pass it 1, 1, 1, the result should be 9. 1 times 2 plus 1 times 3 plus 1 times 4. And you'll see that in your code, it's going to put tags in front of the values that you are passing. Now, in most cases, however many parameters there are, that's how many arguments you must have in the calling statement. However, since I've declared a default value for each of these, I can get by with only sending it two arguments. In this case, the first one's going to be A and the second one's going to be B. And you'll see that in the code, it would say calculate costs and give it a tag of A and B. I don't need to type those in. Android Studio will add those tags for you. Now I can also just pass it one. So in this case, the one would be A. So my value here would be one times two plus 10 times three, that's 30, that's 32, plus 20 times four, that's 80. 80 and 32 is 112. I can also choose to not pass it anything. And now it's gonna use those default values of A being five, B equal 10, C being 20, and my total would be 120 that's calculated. In the argument list, I have to do these in the order. So if I wanted a B value, I, I couldn't just say 20 and not have a value for A because expecting this as being A, B, and C. But I can name my argument. In this case, B equals 20. And now what I'm gonna get is A is five, that's gonna be 10. B is 20 times three, that's gonna be 70. And I'm giving a value of C, so the default of 20, the value of 20 times four is 80. 70 plus 80 is 150. And that's going to be the total cost value. If I'm naming my arguments, I don't have to follow the order. So here's another example where I put C first. C equals 3, B equals 2, A equals 1. I can put those in any order as long as they're named. In this case, the value is going to be 20. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And 3 times 40 is 12. 2 plus 6 plus 12 gives me 20. We can create methods that are named the same and overload them. So here I have two methods that are called my method but the signatures are different. And what I mean by the signatures are the parameter list. So in the first one, 
the function my method is expecting two integers. And we're going to take those integers and do some math and return a interpolated string of the answer is whatever the value of d is. In the second one, also called my method, the two parameters I'm passing are strings. And contextually, based on the values being passed to the method call of my method, it's going to know which one of these methods to execute. They both return a string, but the parameter list is different, and that's the different signatures. I can't have these return different things and the, the signature of the parameter list be the same. It wouldn't know which one to do. So in the second function, simply declaring a value of D and having equal the string value of A, concatenating a space less than equals greater than space and concatenating B and returning just the value of D. So if I call my method with value with the value of my string equals my method two comma four, I'm passing it integers. The value of my string is going to be the answer is 24. But if I pass it a two in quotes and a four in quotes, declaring those as strings, it's going to run the second method. And now it's going to be two space less than equals greater than space four as I concatenate a string going into my string. For simple functions, we just want to do a calculation and return a value, you can declare the function as a single line. This is called a single expression method. So I just simply named my, my function here, my single expression, passing it a and b, and then I have a value that's being calculated from a and b. So it equals, not using a colon, but using equals a times two plus b times five. And in this case, it's gonna return a value of 24 if I pass it a two and a four. Let's well, a quick look at functions in Kotlin. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Android app development cohort playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.